opportunity for a big number again today against a Wake Forest defensive unit that is uh, down near the bottom of the ACC in just about every category. And out to the 25 for their first possession. And it will be the true freshman Trevor Lawrence from Cartersville, Georgia. The number two rated recruit, the top quarterback recruit, and taking over a couple of weeks ago for Kelly Bryant as the guy at Clemson. I love digging into the tape. This kid is a pure pocket passer. Moving within the pocket. He's great with his legs, but he's moving to get the ball down the field. But he hasn't faced much adversity this year. That'll be interesting to see if that happens today or moving forward. He's got a good one in the backfield with him. And ETN, the sophomore, they'll throw it to the outside. Amari Rogers. It's a very solid receiving core as well. Rogers, Higgins, and Hunter Renfro. And they really like the youngster, true freshman Justin Ross, could get a little more PT today. Clemson will start out quickly. Dropped by ETN in the backfield. They'll rule it an incomplete pass. So it's going to bring up third and long. I think you'll see a, a more fluent passing offense with Clemson. This is the growing trend across football, right? The Alabamas, these teams can now throw the ball down the field and be dangerous. That's why Trevor Lawrence is in the game. 43% conversion rate on third downs this year for the Tigers. Good protection in front of Trevor, gets the pass away, caught at the 30 and stuffed immediately was Garrett Williams. And Wake Forest will force the punt. Again, Lawrence, as good as he's played, Beth, still growing. I had a trips formation there. Renfro was actually wide open, didn't get it to him, was looking that way, dumps it off late. So good job by Wake's defense to get off the field. And here he is, Beth, right? Greg Dortch, this is the guy, right? 20-plus touches for me. He's going to return punts. He's going to play receiver. He's, this kid is magic with the football in his hands. Only active player with a couple of punt returns, one of 60 and one of 70 for touchdowns. And he's forced a fair catch there at his own 29 after the 41-yard punt from Will Spires. So we turn our attention to another newcomer at quarterback. It's Sam Hartman, the freshman out of Cornelius, North Carolina, coming off a terrific four-touchdown performance last week against Rice. Don't sleep on this true freshman. His stats are as good as any in the ACC. Very live arm. He's active. He'll run. He's tough at the in the pocket. And he's perfecting this RPO system. When to pull it, when to throw it, when to suck the backers in. If he can get that down today, he can be effective. They're going to run it. Matt Colburn, 2,000-yard career rusher, the senior from Irmo, South Carolina. They're going to go fast, nearly 90 plays a game. Twice this year, they've scored over 50 points in a contest. Let's check in with Rocky on another Colburn carry, Rock. One thing I already noticed down here with this Wake Forest offensive line, every play starts off as a run. You can't really tell a difference of when they're pass blocking or when they're run blocking because they're essentially coming out on the run. They're firing out a little bit. It's very deceptive, tough, especially for these linebackers. Looking at a third and five. Hartman stepping up in the pocket, will run for it and appears to have enough. Close to the 40, Kayvon Wallace the safety got a hit on him, but it'll move the sticks. That's a good job of getting out, but you better watch yourself running the football. He got balled up there, coiled down pretty hard by the defense. You cannot take those shots in last four quarters of football. Ball start, offense, number 71. Five-yard penalty, first down. That's on Nathan Gilliam. Not only a hard shot at the end of the run but twice anthony we've already seen he holds that ball so long at the mesh point he's even taken a couple of hits after he hands off yeah rocky makes a great point what it does on the defensive side bet it takes away your aggressiveness up front defensive line cannot just penetrate through the gap like they want to 
deterring some of those aggressive plays you'll see up front from them. Pass incomplete. That was Kendall Joseph who blew that thing up with the pressure right up the middle. And you're right, Anth. That's what happens. The linebackers find themselves in no man's land. As a linebacker, you want to come downhill. You want to attack that run. But as soon as you do it, Sam Harbin pulls that ball out and pops the pass right behind you. It's tough. Here we go. Run it on second and 15, and Clemson does a nice job of stretching that play out. They got four outstanding D linemen. That was Christian Wilkins with the tackle there, the grad student out of Springfield, Mass. And a second team All American last year. Four, all four of those guys expected to go quickly in the NFL draft next spring. Back to Brinks up. There's a lot of money on that <laughs> defensive line, there's no doubt. <laughs> Third and long, and here they come again. And it's Trey Lamar, the middle linebacker, with the sack of Sam Hartman. Then it's fourth down. Yeah. Trey Lamar, he's a guy, he's going to come through. He's very active at the line of scrimmage. If anything, he blitzes the most of all the linebackers on this football team. You better put a body on him. You see number 22, Colburn, is late on that. You have to get up in the line of scrimmage and take that block on early. Loss of 12 on the sack. Dom Maggio will punt this from his own 10-yard line. Amari Rogers awaits. And Amari on the run. Lunges out to the 42-yard line, a six-yard return after a 40-yard punt, scoreless early at Wake. Adam and Burke back in our college football studios, updating you on Texas and Oklahoma. 45 all, and Dicker the kicker makes it from 40 yards out. The Longhorns win it. 48-45, 93 points, the most ever combined in this rivalry between the Longhorns and the Sooners. Texas is back, Beth Moans. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Adnan. Uh, so one unbeaten goes down today. We've got another one here. Clemson back on offense. And the give to Travis Etienne. What a job he did last week against Syracuse. 27 carries, 203 yards, and three touchdown runs, including the game winner late. Trevor Lawrence against the four-man pressure. He's going to run with it, will slide and get out to midfield. Now that's his first contact since that neck injury last week. Yeah, you know, he's 6'6", so even when he slides, Beth, still a lot of his body is still up in the air. Took a shot really close there, Wake Forest didn't get a flag, but he's got to be smart as a runner. They don't, they don't want to get him on the sidelines anymore. Looking at a third and three here. Edge pressure coming. Ball gets away from Warren, still down on the deck, and Wake Forest has it. Boogie Basham with the fumble recovery. Carlos Basham, that ball just comes out of his hands right in the midsection there. It slips out in the back. He falls over, ball's dangling between his legs. Carlos Basham does a nice job of just falling on. This is a gimme fumble here. Very odd. You know, big hands, big quarterback. It's a huge play for Wake Forest, Beth. They are set up now at the Tiger 41. Hartman in trouble immediately. Cleveland Farrell. It's the second sack for Clemson. Heck. Cleveland Farrell is, is not a good matchup on the edge to try to protect. These guys are long and fast on the edges and disruptors in the middle. Now the rollout to help him try and buy some time to throw down field. Caught by Alex Bachman for a first down, but there is a flag down back at the line of scrimmage. Personal foul, illegal block below the waist. Offense, number 36. 15-yard penalty, second down. Well, well that's going to be on Cade Carney. The block below the waist. Yeah, I see him here. Once he gets outside uh, the box or five yards down the field, you cannot do that. So that's a penalty flag this year. We're, we've already seen how little time, Anthony, they have 
to try and find Greg Dortch. He's their playmaker. He's their guy. Well, if he can't win one-on-one -on -one in, in the slot and they don't have the time, they need to get the ball to him quickly, quick passes, move him, jet sweeps. All those things have to be in play to find a way to get him a ball. They'll throw it to the outside looking for Bachman, and it's incomplete. And they got to find a way to get Dorch involved early. Go back a couple weeks ago versus Boston College. He only had five first-half targets. I say just find any way. Get the ball in his hands early. Let him get in the flow of the game because he is a game-changing kind of player. Rocky, what would you call on third and 30? I'm putting you on the spot real quick. <laughs> I get the ball to number three. I know that. <laughs> They're going to run it instead. And nothing doing. Cleveland Farrell with the stop. Junior out of Richmond, Virginia. Six sacks now on the season for Cleland and Dorch. Frustration through the first couple of possessions and Wake is unable to do anything with the turnover in Clemson territory. Two possessions, guys. They are negative 24 yards. Rodgers will wave for the fair catch. 42 yards on the punt. Clemson will have it on their own 18. The defense dominant, strutting their stuff early. In the second half, and now he returns to start again today. And he throws it out into the flat T. Higgins. Of course, without Trevor Lawrence, that was the guy that saved the day, Chase Bryce. Led the longest game-winning drive by Clemson in the final minute of play since 1958. But now back to the penny and the headset as the backup. Samson. It was interesting hearing from Jeff Scott, uh, one of the uh, co-offensive coordinators. They had actually talked about that very scenario last Friday night. Hey, here's what happens if Trevor does happen to get knocked out of the game. And sure enough, they were ready for it. And especially Bryce and the job of that offensive line to create running room for ETN. Not on that occasion, though. Nasir Greer getting into the backfield. Beth, this Wake Forest defense is playing fast, and that's been the effort the last couple weeks ever since they let go of Jay Savell, the defensive coordinator, is to simplify things and let these boys fly around. They're doing it today. Got Clemson right now, Rocky to third and seven. Pressure right up the middle. Lawrence able to chuck it out of bounds, but he was in the grasp of Rondell Buthroyd. And the Tigers are 0 for 3 on third downs here in the first. It's a nice job here coming underneath number 46. That's uh, Taylor. He's the Mike Backer on the edge line of the scrimmage, making a big play, rushing Lawrence there. Again, Wake doing some good things early on defense. They appear to be working on Trevor Lawrence over there on the Clemson bench. Keep an eye on that Clemson sideline for you. The punt here on fourth down. Dorch, nowhere to go after the 38-yard punt. And Trevor Lawrence, folks, has gone into the tent to get checked out by Clemson. Meanwhile, back to the action, and the dominance continues for this Clemson defense. Xavier Thomas and another negative yardage play for Wake Forest. It doesn't matter how deceptive your operation is. If you can't block anybody, it's going to be a long day. Hartman on the carry, and he, too, has taken a couple of hits early. we got a flag down. Still no targets for Greg Dorch yet. Illegal formation offense. Five players are in the backfield. Penalties decline. They average three penalties a game. That's their third penalty of the quarter. Right, here's another shot he takes here. They're not going to be fun. I would say that they're telling 
the defense when he doesn't have the ball hit him real close and when he runs the ball you got to make sure you tackle him he is a true freshman get in his head a little bit uh, but this obviously with the penalties last two series Beth are not helping this football team third and long their total yards now is still in the negative through their first three drives Hartman with some time overthrows it and almost intercepted Mark Fields couldn't hold on and it's fourth down a good job of protection by Wake Forest. They have a veteran offensive line, but not a great throw by Sam Hartman down the field. I'd say two things are wrong. The throw is bad, and Greg Dortch runs a short route that wouldn't have been deep enough for the first down. Sails right over, just gets away from him. You got to catch that ball if you're, if you're Fields. Uh, finally back, he was suspended last week. Beth didn't play in that game. Rodgers with a chance. And out to about the 42, a return of eight yards, and Trevor Lawrence will indeed return for Clemson. Wrangler jeans. LSU Florida just underway. They are scoreless so far. Beth Mullins, Anthony Beck, Rocky Boyman, and Travis Etienne. Touchdown, Tigers. 59 yards. The offense starts, in my opinion, Beth, with ETN. He's the guy that can lead this team and take the pressure off the quarterback position. Just a sophomore, but nobody's run it better thus far, averaging seven and a half yards per carry. Early on in his career, the best figure so far in Clemson history. 59 yards here. He's the most explosive, dynamic player on the field. You better put a body on this guy or he will make you pay. 7-0 Clemson jumping on top of Wake Forest, Travis Etienne with the long touchdown run, his ninth of the season. And that will put Clemson a bit more at ease after some struggles through their first couple of possessions. Over the head of Greg Jor uh, Dorch and Anthony, let's go back and break down that run. Yeah, it's all about key blocks, right? We're gonna watch the center come up underneath and we'll also get the fullback kicking out. That's Williams. And again, ETN just patience, lets the block set up, and look at that hole open up. Home run, baby. That, that's what it's all about, and he is a game changer, Beth. Fluid. That, that's the use I would work, use to describe him as he runs. He bends, he wiggles, he just kind of flows through the hole, and then, of course, he has that sixth gear to just leave people at the end. Justin Falsinelli and those guys up front leading the way, and now what's the response for Wake Forest? Short run. First and goal, it's Nick Brosette. We got points. Seven nothing. Tigers have the lead in Gainesville. Beth. Thank you, Adnan. Trey Lamar with the tackle on Matt Colburn right there. It's going to bring up a third down. Not much so far for Wake Forest to crow about offensively. Much more manageable third and seven, even though that's a long way. Bet they had third and 30, third and 12. They need to make a big play here. They bunch up Greg Dorch to the left. Hartman rolling that way, incomplete, and it's fourth down. The total yardage remains in the negative for Wake here in the first quarter. And again, I know they're trying to work the run early downs, but Greg Dorch to get one opportunity so far in this game, you better find ways to get your best playmaker of the football. I said 20 touches. He hasn't got any yet. No, just one target, in fact. 15 plays for minus three yards. The fair catch here for Rodgers as he runs it out of bounds at the 31. And let's check back in with Adnan. All right, Beth, updates coming at you fast and furious. Florida State, Miami, how about this rivalry game? DeAndre Francois to Keith Gavin. Right now, it's on ESPN News. It'll be on ABC once Maryland, Michigan concludes. Seminoles looking good. Beth? 
Thank you very much, Adnan. Well, perhaps we saw a little turning point for Florida State in that late win at Louisville. Of course, the Ville took it on the chin again from Georgia Tech last night. Adam Choice now in a tailback. This is Ross. They really like this youngster. The freshman already having an impact out to the 36-yard line. He's been a big play guy, averaging over 20 yards per catch. Nice target, too. 6'4", 210 pounds. He's got three touchdowns on a year, so he's a guy with this space, a little off coverage by these corners. They're going to get those quick throws and let receivers make plays. Choice for a couple more. It'll be third and short. Well, the ESPN app now has ESPN Plus. Get more ESPN and download now for all the latest, and uh, including, including a chance to keep up with all the recruiting news going on. This is a third and four right now for the Tigers. This is Choice coming out of the backfield. He's going to be about a yard short. Got to the 40. They needed the 41. Boogie Basham with the stop. And it's fourth down. All right, Basham's done a nice job. I really like this kid. 6'5", 270 pounds. He's a sophomore bet. I thought he was really working the tackles against Notre Dame. He's a young player. He has to build, build his consistency, but he's showing up early on in this football game. His relentlessness is very noticeable down here on the field. All right, here we go again with Greg Dortch. His punt return average, nearly 17 yards per game. That is number one in FBS. Hasn't had much of a chance so far. That will bounce right to him. And he is buried at the 11 after the 47-yard punt. Well, tonight on ABC, you've got sixth ranked and unbeaten Notre Dame headed to Blacksburg to take on number 24, Virginia Tech. It's Saturday Night Football presented by Wells Fargo tonight at 8 Eastern. And how about the play of Ian Book? He got his first start right here at Wake a couple yeah, weeks ago. He took this game over. It was really the Ian Book show, uh, whether it was running, passing. This kid is really taking Notre Dame to the next level. Had five touchdowns that afternoon and then followed it up with the big win at home last week against Stanford. Guys talking about Ian Book, last two weeks in a row, he's hit 10 different wide receivers. I love watching him. The biggest thing that stands out is he just is able to make quick decisions. I think the most the most important attribute for a quarterback, he's playing well. This, may, this is the last ranked stumbling block for the Irish on their schedule tonight. They try to run it up the middle after trying to get it to Dortch on that last play. Tanner Muse with the stop. I think, Clem I think Clemson's plan for the RPO is just attack it. Just, just attack, push those offensive linemen back, shoot those gaps, and it's working right now. Third and nine. Clawson's all riled up at the officials right now. Huckman in trouble. Chased by Wilkins. He'll chuck it downfield and Dorch with a big cushion to make the catch at the 35 for the first down. I don't know what route that could have been. He just really gets out, finds an open space. Again, tight coverage, and he just adjusts. When your quarterback rolls, you come back to the sidelines, get yourself open. Good vision by Hartman to get the ball to him. The first catch, 22 yards to Dortch, and then not on the same page with Alex Bachman. Second and ten coming up under three minutes to go here in the first and a touchdown lead for the Tigers on the Travis Etienne 59 yard run. clawson has been heated here since this uh, series started. I would say calm down. You got a young quarterback, some young players. Let's get refocused and get your offense going. They'll run it out to the 40 with Kate Carney. He's their lead rusher, the junior from advanced North Carolina and a four yard pickup. Clawson now in his fifth season. Back-to-back -back bowl years. They went eight and five a year ago. With an experienced quarterback. And now the freshman, they get the first down yardage right there to Bachman. Looks like they got it. And here they go, up yeah. tempo. I mean, that yellow line isn't exactly the first down, but referees seem good. But you see that live arm by Hartman. 
Hartman trying to go against the grain and taken down immediately at uh, the 45, Rocky. Guys, I think it's important to mention down here, it's pretty hot, pretty humid. So with this up-tempo, you see some defensive linemen with their hands on their hips right now. This combination of heat and tempo is tough for defense. The one thing they're doing is rotating some of those linemen in between series. We'll see if these guys can play as well as their starters. Carney stuffed for a loss. Niles Pinckney, one of those backups in the middle with the hit. Yeah, last year they lacked depth, right? That's what Coach Venables had told us. This year they feel like they have some guys that can come in and give refreshers to their starting defensive line. Third and 12. Hartman. Here comes Farrell right in his face, forcing him to toss it downfield. And it's intercepted by Tanner Muse. Give Cleveland the assist. Getting right in Hartman's grill. Farrell's been a problem, rolls inside, goes right over the center. Anderson doesn't pick him up, forces Hartman to throw this ball off balance where you just can't throw it up in the air. Freshman mistake, and Muse, Clemson's defense, makes him pay. Sixth pick of the season for Sam. Again, middle of the field area. This could be a big play opportunity. Big receivers got Trey uh, T. Higgins on the outside. Do they take a chance to start this off a turnover? Trevor, so far, six of eight throwing. The officials blew the whistle there and actually moved the ball back a yard. So it's from their own 38. Tavian Feaster is now the tailback. So the third different guy we've seen for Clemson. They can all hit it big out to the 45. Another gain of seven. Yeah, all these backs that come in, they're all starters somewhere else, Beth. Joyce comes in, downhiller. He started back in 2014. Then Feaster comes in, who's nicked in. Looks like he may have got a little stinger on his shoulder, but you know what? They just roll another guy in. ETN comes in. That's that's worse for this week for his defense. I'm waiting for Clemson to put one up in the air. This secondary for Wake Forest has really struggled all season. And it's interesting, Rocky, with the off coverage, they're honoring that speed, trying to stay away from these explosive pass plays. On second down, another quick hitter to the edge. And a first down to T. Higgins. You guys mentioned the big plays. How about six of them for Boston College in the BC win? Explosive plays. And now it is T. Higgins, the injured Tiger. Forest guys sitting down as well. And here's the hit right on the sidelines. Boom, man. Takes one in the helmet, takes one in the ribs. Are they going to look at a possible target right here? That certainly would appear to be crown of the helmet from Cameron Glenn to T. Higgins. And, you know, T. Higgins is kind of going down. It's, it's always a tough angle. The helmet's hit for sure. Wake's got a guy down as well. So two guys getting injured on this play. It's a penalty on Clawson yeah. here, I think, guys. There is no foul on the play. Injured player to Wake Forest. So I'm still unclear as to why that wouldn't be a targeting foul. The ruling on the field is a first down. The previous play is under review. And there you go. And there you go. 46 so, seconds to go here in the first. So again, the, the, the helmets collide. Obviously, that's instantaneous. Uh, again, we're not supposed to judge. I mean, that's. I would say he lowered his head there and led with it. Hits in the helmet neck area of that, Higgins, and that, that's probably going to be a disqualification. That's his, yeah, that's his textbook, unfortunately, as it comes for Cameron Glenn. That's a fifth year senior, very experienced guy in the back end. Uh, where they've had some issues, now he comes out. Uh, probably Luke Masterson, number 12, who actually had a good game last yeah. week. Beth will probably come in and replace him. We did uh, notice that T. Higgins did go into the medical tent for Clemson. And almost looks like an identical shot in area that Trevor Lawrence took a shot last week in that neck 
helmet area. So hopefully he's okay in two weeks, two of your stud players with injuries. Clemson just not very lucky the last couple weeks. Still under review. score thus far the uh, Travis Etienne 59 yard touchdown run and a dominating performance so far by the Clemson defense after review it has been determined personal foul targeting defense number two 15 yard penalty from the end of the play number two is disqualified so that is the starting safety, Cameron Glenn, who will be out. Luke Masterson, Anthony, as you said, the next man up. And normally I would say that's a tough loss, but even though he's a fifth-year senior, Masterson's been working in quite a bit. And again, you see that C on his jersey. Means he's a captain, best, so he'll be a big loss for this football team. It is a defense that scored twice last week with a couple of their DBs, a pick six and a fumble return for a touchdown and their big win over Rice. ETN, check that, that's Amari Rogers. Knocked out of bounds inside the 30. Clemson will step on the gas a bit here. Ross. Boy, they seem to really like Anthony, their chances on the edge with the speed of their wideouts. Well, what it does is with off coverage with the corners, when they're, there's space, it forces them to make a choice. They're going to continue to do it. If you get tighter, then that's where those shots that Rocky was talking about will come. So Clemson being very patient right now with the receivers. End of the first quarter here at Wake. An undefeated Clemson in town. Showing what they can do on the defensive side in a 7-0 lead. Welcome back to ESPN College Football, presented by PlayStation 4. 7-0 Clemson as we start the second. And the Tigers with a third down and one. Two tight ends set here with Travis Etienne in the backfield. Rodgers and Ross to the left, stacked. They'll run it behind the fullback. ETN lunging. Good push by Wake Forest. Yeah, they may be short, and this is the, the area, Beth, I've been concerned about, the offensive line. But haven't been as physical as they have been in the past. They've had opportunities week in and week out to make key plays, make key blocks. Looks like they're going to go for it. Again, you got to find commas. These guys have to come off the ball. I would again hand it off and let these, these guys up front make something happen. They'll add tight end Cannon Smith. They'll keep the fullback Garrett Williams in there. And they'll set up in the eye on fourth down. ETN with the bounce inside the 10 yard line. First and goal, Clemson. As Travis got to the edge. Well, everybody was bunched up in the middle. I guess what they did, they ran a little power to the outside. Good lead block. and. Kind of full Wake Forest on that one, getting themselves a big run. Calhoun just did not think that ball was going to be able to bounce outside, but ETN so explosive, got to the corner quick. You know, and that was what the defensive coordinators were telling us yesterday. That lethal jump cut, as they called it, did not set the edge there. ETN down to the four. Again, bouncing it outside, and you get Calhoun. And you, you know, pinning your guys, trying to make those blocks. You got a puller that wraps around, and it's all clean. And ETN is a runner. If you watch him on film and do your study your notes, he wants to bounce it to the outside. You must have a contained player in play. The H back Williams will now line up as a tight end. ETN 86 yards on the ground, and he'll get four more in his second touchdown of the day. Give him three.
three yards on that one for his 10th touchdown rush of the year. And he's, he's starting to hurt him a little bit, Beth, with the runs, and this defense needs to lock in on him because he's becoming a weapon. PAT, not the prettiest, but it's good. Dame in Blacksburg to take on Virginia Tech. And here is Greg Dortch, ball in his hands on the kick return, and he lost it. Fumbled it at the 35, and it trickled out of bounds, and it will stay with Wake. Let's check in to the studio with Adnan. All right, Beth, thank you. Big 12 football in Stillwater. Iowa State started the season with Powell Kemp as a quarterback, then went to Zeb Nolan, and now Brock Hurd is in. He's 7-7 seven seven so far. Hakeem Butler, a great catch. 21-yard touchdown, 16-7 on ESPN2 for the Cyclones. Beth? Thank you, Adnan. We've got a 14-0 lead here. Clemson leading Wake Forest early in the second quarter. Zero rushing yards in that first quarter for Wake Forest. They'll try the sky incomplete. Intended for Sage Surratt. Mark Fields had the coverage. Again, Dorch probably trying to over press a little bit does come out of him loses but he gets a lucky bounce it goes out of bounds so Wake Forest retains it but uh, again finding him the football ways to get him the football will be important here he is with a touch his second catch railed out of bounds at the 34 it's going to bring up a third down and that is the 100th career catch for Greg Dorch the fastest player in Wake history to do it he needed just 14 career games And they're going to be short of the marker by a yard. Jack Frudenfall with the catch. Kayvon Wallace wrapped him up. And Phil Haynes is the injured deacon. That's their best offensive lineman. This kid is an NFL talent, four-year starter. This would be a huge loss. Hopefully he's okay. Making his 40th start today, Phil Haynes. We're back in a moment. They also named a residence hall after Brian here on the Wake campus. One of the all-time great sports movies, Brian Song. Offense, number one. Five-yard penalty, first down. Too many negative plays. The story for Wake right here. D. Lyman having a little fun there. <laughs> they were just all in unison pointing the other way like the referee was pointing a flag. But, I mean, look, Wake Forest is punting, Beth. I think they had the ball in that series about 35 seconds. Yeah. I mean, you got to come up with something better than that, or Clemson's going to get the ball in good field position and continue to score points. Fair catch at the 25 by Amari Rogers, a 41-yard punt. For Travis Etienne already with a couple of touchdown runs, Anthony. Yeah, a lot of hit things this kid's doing throughout this season. One of the most explosive players in the country. One of the top rushers with yardages uh, throughout, but he's just been a game changer. He's a guy that's hard to tackle, really been untouched on a lot of these runs. Great blocking up front, but anytime he touches the ball, this defense has to gang tackle this kid because he's that dangerous. Six it's carries for 89 yards so far. Adam Choice is in there right now. Choice with a burst of about eight, Rocky. So I'll ask you guys, is Travis Etienne the best running back in the ACC? Obviously we're talking A.J. Dillon, Cam Akers, what do you think? Uh, he's an explosive playmaker, Rocky. I mean, I'm gonna put him right up there. A.J. Dillon's a much different back, power guy, but he gets a tremendous amount of yards himself. Uh, the load is on his back. Etienne is a guy I think is an awesome compliment for this Clemson team. So I'll tell you, I mean, it's hard. I'd take him. I mean, he, he'd be the number one back and taking every snap for any team across the country outside of Clemson. Trevor Lawrence with the run out to the 45. Well, wait a second. Rocky, you're the defensive guy. Who do you not want to try and tackle amongst those ACC I, I always hated going against the, the smaller, fast guys. I, you know, yeah. I'll take the sledgehammer, A.J. Dillon, Jerome Bettis guys <laughs> all day. But those guys that can kind of run over you and around you, those are the tough ones. They are moving it now and spreading it around. That's TJ Chase with a touch out to midfield. Adnan's got another update for us. Adnan? That's right, Beth. This time I want to update you on what's happening with the Hurricanes. Florida State facing Miami and the Coastal Prairie to Lawrence Cagers. Seven all right now. Game's over on ABC. Beth? 
Thank you very much, Adnan. Good news for Clemson fans. T. Higgins is back in the game down at the bottom of your screen after getting injured earlier in the first half on a targeting penalty. The previous play is under review for targeting. So they're going to go back and see if there was targeting on the end of that last play to T.J. Chase. We will take a break while they review the hit from Amari targeting on that last tackle by Amari Henderson. Yeah, Henderson really absorbing the blow of the receiver chase coming at him. So, again, when the helmets touch, they always want to be sure to be, uh, check it out. But that was a clear cut one for the referees. Two touchdown lead for Clemson. They're on the move again. Trevor Lawrence has completed his last six pass attempts. Empty set here for Trevor. Edge pressure coming, and it'll get him. DJ Taylor throws him down for the loss of six. And it's third down and 10. Yeah, they have a lot of movement at the offensive line. You see on the edge, they're going to come out. And again, you got to see, see Cade a little late. The guard's supposed to pick out and kick that linebacker from coming from death, and he doesn't get there. He sees him, but he's just too late, not quick enough. And again, that's what happens. You roll around different players, different guards, rotate linemen. Sometimes you're not quite on the same page. Clemson uses a lot of them. They do not have a third down conversion yet today against the three-man pressure. Lawrence down the seam. Justin Ross, touchdown Tigers. Finally got some room, Beth. That's why this young man is playing quarterback for Clemson. Really nice job. He looks it out. It's got trips on the right side and just reads it. Three routes, really an all, they call it an all-go special. Renfro clears it, and it is a wide-open seam pass to Terrell. Second scoring play of over 50 yards. Lawrence on his birthday turns 19 today. He's got a TD toss to Ross. Carving him up, this is what you do when you... You get the ball out of your hands fast, he's fired up. It only takes one to do the damage. Bridge Beth, here's a safety Masterson, and what happens is Renfro is gonna come and suck him down, and that's gonna give Ross the open seam up the middle. Watch Renfro, see the safety jump him. Nobody's home with Ross after that rotation, and then there's just too much speed up the middle. Another dangerous rep weapon, a true freshman making a play. His 11th career catch, four of them have been touchdowns for Justin Ross, one of their top recruits. How about an Ohio State update for us, Adnan? That's right, Beth. Coming off that emotional victory against Penn State a week ago, this time the Buckeyes and the Hoosiers were at 4-1 right now. It's J.K. Dobbins punching in 7-3 right now for Ohio State. Beth? Thank you, Adnan. Just noticing that Syracuse and Pittsburgh have now gone to overtime this afternoon. Another ACC matchup right now. Phil Haynes, number 74, is back in there at left guard for Wake Forest. Still without any rush yards today and now in a 21-point hole. So they're going to go to Greg Dortch again. He's their top guy in a gain of 11. Again, touches for him. I mean, 21-0. We haven't seen him get the ball often, but it's never too late to start. They've really just had the one big play, and that's about it. Clemson has been wrapping them up, Rocky. And the reason is, Beth, they're playing a lot of man-to-man, -man, and they can do that because they have the horses to do it. They have a lot of four- and five-star recruits. That's really the only way to take away that RPO scheme. Second and six, the jet sweep, and there's the youngster again, Xavier Thomas, who had that huge sack late in the Syracuse game. Really love Xavier Thomas. Uh, they really feel like he's the clone of Vic Beasley. They say he's much ahead of where he was the same year, and he got a great first step. They talk about that coming off the football. He's a very dynamic, young, up-and-coming player. Another negative play there, a loss of five. Hartman to Greg Dortch. And he will rule that a catch at the 40. 
But that's going to be fourth down and six now for Wake. Again, uh, just the pressure around him in the pocket. Looks like it hits the ground there as well. They, they'll probably look at this again. But again, how, how quick was this series, Beth? Yeah. I mean, Clemson's getting it back. They really have no yards on offense. I mean, uh, it's just too easy for Clemson right now. And now um, they're going to take this yardage away from them, too, I think, on this review. Yeah, just 52 yards of total offense. And obviously that's the hard part about running this kind of offensive scheme. If you're not getting first downs, your defense is right back on the field. Last year, this Wake Forest defense, second most defensive snaps in the country. It's, it's tough. I mean, you're, you're playing an extra two or three games getting those kind of snaps. You see the ball there, Beth, clearly, at least on that first angle that we saw hits the ground. And you're right. I mean, I, you know, it's, you know, this offense is effective when it goes. I mean, last week against Rice, it was it was a game changer. I mean, they put up a ton of points. Notre Dame, they scored a lot of points. They weren't able to kind of get the ball moving against them. They scored, but for but Notre Dame was ahead the entire game and had a lot of offensive snaps in that football game as well. So if you continue to get off and don't move the chains like Rocky was saying, you know, you're going to have no shot against teams like Clemson, Notre Dame, and some of these other big time schools. They are the only team in the ACC that averages over 30 points per game scoring, but also gives up over 30 points per game. And they got dinged up pretty good by both the Irish and BC with the big plays, and that's been the story for Clemson as well with a pair of over 50-yard touchdowns. And this is a rushing team. I don't let don't make a mistake what Wake Forest, Wake Forest wants to do. I mean, they're they're on the top. I believe uh, 20 uh, in rushing throughout the country. So they have nothing going on with their backs and quarterbacks. After review, the pass hit the ground. Therefore, it is incomplete. It will be fourth down and 11. Please reset the game clock to eight minutes and 49 seconds. 8.49 on the game clock. Dorch has been targeted now six times. Three catches for 37 yards. And they'll have to punt it away again. Sixth punt already of this half from Don Maggio. He'll chase Rogers back inside the 20 to the 15. And now for a look. But he's been very fluent as far as passing the ball. Of course, the big touchdown pass down the scene when he was given the opportunity to go down the field, Beth, which wasn't often so far in this first half. He makes it happen, and he's a happy birthday boy today. Turning 19 years of age. And look at, uh, look at the resume already for the youngster out of Cartersville High School in Georgia, the National Player of the Year, two-time Gatorade Player of the Year. And he broke uh, a lot of Deshaun Watson's Georgia High School state records. 41 straight wins or something, Beth, to finish yeah. off his career. That's it's not bad, not, not shabby. Bad. Not bad. And it was really the Georgia Tech win earlier this year that sealed the deal in the coach's eyes. Five touchdowns on six drives, and that's when uh, that's when he took over for Kelly Bryant, who has uh, since left the team, and will look to transfer elsewhere. You know, when you got a program humming, right, and you're recruiting so well, you're bringing in top five class after top five class. Some guys aren't going to stay, and and it's actually three top notch quarterbacks that have left Clemson just in the last 10 months. Zarek Cooper's already playing at Jacksonville State. Hunter Johnson is on deck at Northwestern, and it still remains to be seen where Bryant is headed. As he will have one year remaining. That's Lynn J. Dixon with the carry. And the one thing that they told Kelly Bryant is, look, Trevor Lawrence is starting this week. They didn't say he's starting the rest of the season, uh, which was interesting because I felt like there was still a role for him in this team. I mean, he's done so much, but again, his choice is to move on and, and Clemson adjusts. One for six on third downs. 
Lawrence on a rollout. He's going to air it out deep downfield and well overthrown, looking for Hunter Renfro. And it's fourth down. Renfro, one of the most accountable, reliable receivers on this football team. And a little quiet today, obviously. A lot of those quick passes go to the outside receivers. But when, when in doubt and you need a play, trust me, during the season, Renfro is the guy you're getting the ball to, a former walk-on, just a gamer, a clutch receiver. And he had a big one versus Syracuse yep. uh, as well to, to help cinch that victory. Will Spires will kick it out of his own end zone. An opportunity here for Greg Dortch at his own 45. Pressure coming. They got after the kicker and knocked down Spires. A flag is down as the ball is down at the 45-yard line. Now the question is, Beth, here, did he get a piece of the football? Because if he did, he's going to be okay. You, you never know when you're not going to get blocked. you got to be ready. Take it right off Personal his foot. Personal foul. Roughing the kicker. Defense, number 34. 15-yard penalty. First down. Yeah, he definitely runs into him, but it looked like the ball got deflected. Let's see it here. Uh, did, I, I mean, gosh, he could have caught that off his foot. He was so close. That's Jasir Taylor. You're right. He could have just grabbed the ball. Yeah, he does miss it. And you got to track the football, and you see he's disappointed. He could, um, perfect position. You got to get those hands right on the foot. One thing that's interesting to me, Beth, every time Clemson punts, Wake Forest is going for a block or some type of penetration. If I got Dorch in the back, I'm doing hold up. I'm going to block all those guys up front so he gets a clean catch and he can actually run with the football. So, interesting choice on special teams. For Wake Forest. Instead, you give it back to Clemson, and this is the first catch for Renfro out across the 30. Hunter, the grad student from Myrtle Beach. Eighth different receiver that Trevor Lawrence has gone to. 12 for 15 so far. With the touchdown throw to Justin Ross. Second and seven, and down he goes. Wrapped up back at the 21. It's Boogie Basham again. And again, they're working linemen. They got a true freshman in there, Carmen, number 79. And he's got Basham. This is not a good mashup. Basham is very good, but look, they got good protection. It's just that Basham continues to work. You got to have an internal clock as a quarterback. Again, Trevor Lawrence is a true freshman. I know he feels comfortable and everybody's kind of there, but if that that defender gets through, you got to know there's a certain time where you got to figure out to do something with the football. Loss of eight, so third and 15. Dumping it off to ETN out of the backfield. He's got the first down out to the 45, but there are all kinds of flags on the carpet behind him. Illegal block in the back, offense. Number 62, 10-yard penalty, third down. And that's sophomore Cade Stewart. He's right here. He's going to hit 37. 37 does a nice shot. Watch him turn his back slightly there, and he's going to hit him right on the numbers. Again, if you're a lineman, he really probably didn't have to touch him there, but no. just kind of stand there. Greer in good position, though, to cause Stewart to make that mistake. They'll stay with Adam Choice in the backfield. Ross and Higgins go to the right. Thompson and Kendrick to the bottom of your screen. Lawrence slings it to the outside. Higgins with the nice dodge. He'll get out across the 25-yard line, and it's fourth down. Got 12 yards back. So let's see if they're going to go after it again or do what you thought they should, Anthony, and set up Dorch for a return. Yeah, and what I mean is when you see all these linemen up front, they're going to try to penetrate the gap. I would just go right at the, these defenders right here and block them so they can't run down the field and make clean tackles. 
Better job. That's a holdup right there. And this is a returnable play. A boomer to Dorch. Trying to get to the outside. Does get the near sideline. And the cutback out across midfield will set up Wake Forest. How about an overtime update, Adnan? Beth, I got bad news for you. Syracuse has taken on Pitt, 44-37. Pitt has the lead, and Eric Dungy puts it up, but he's intercepted. So Syracuse drops back-to-back -back games as Pitt pulls off the upset, 44-37. Beth, back to you and Anthony. Yeah, tough one for LaRange on the day. Well, the other orange doing all right here. Clemson leading Wake Forest, 21 to nothing, under five minutes to go in the first half. Syracuse perhaps a bit of a hangover from last week's loss, and they'll go deep down the middle to the tight end, Jack Frutenthal. Gain of 20. <laughs> Trying to run it, and it is just not there. They are still in the negative on the ground. Yeah, again, suck the linebacker in, Beth. 57, Lamar, uh, Trey Lamar just slightly hesitates. That allows the tight end to slip over the top and get a nice pass from Hartman. That was one of the few times they weren't playing man-to-man. -man. You can see what happens. They'll go ahead and empty it out, and Hartman looking for a seam. He'll push his way down to the 25, and it's going to bring up third down in about seven. Christian Wilkins was on the bottom of that stack. See, when you play man-to-man, -man, you have the running back. You, you can be aggressive. You can go get him, because even as a pass, he's your guy. Underneath, it's going to be close. Rudenthal reaching for it. That's a nice, I don't know if they got the best spot, but they may have to measure this. And they needed to get to, what, the, the 18 bet? Yeah, right on it. And it appears to be a nose short. I'm wondering if that's. Does, that, does it matter on the fourth down here with 3.39 no, to go, go in the half? Yeah. yeah. Thought maybe the spot could have been better, but it'll be a fourth down. It does give Clemson an opportunity to get some fresh legs and some fresh lungs into the game. They will substitute liberally here. Anticipating a fourth and one. Well, they haven't been great on the run so far. This is where this defensive line of Clemson comes into play. You see Wake Forest trying to calm them down, but that's Clemson fans making that move. They're not going to listen to the line of Wake Forest. They have taken <laughs> over BBNT field. They're down the wrong end of the field here to try to get this crowd quiet. <laughs> it's all orange up there. Well, Ryan Anderson, the center, he's he used to look to his left because there's too much orange in the stadium. Quarterback saying quiet down, and that's only making things louder. Fourth and one. Cade Carney, and unless they gave him that second lunge, he appears to be short. It's a good job by Furl. And they get, well, they're still short, Beth. It's definitely going to be yeah. short. They'll probably measure it again, but they, they got to get to that 18. But Farrell does a nice job of reading this option out and just blowing it up and Again, that noise is a factor. We, we kind of joked about it, but, man, you don't expect that kind of noise for your offensive lineman to try to get off the ball, and it is short. Clemson will take over with 327 to go in the half and a fourth down stop. Watch Farrell's eyes. We won't be able to see his eyes here, but when he presses down, he reads it out, and look who falls there. And it, he had some help, too, as well, with Muse getting in there. So, again, this defense was ready for this. <laughs> he gets a good measure. That's great, Ben, by the way. 6'5", 265 pounds. Scouts are going to look at that and say, wow, that could be flex. I'm standing right next to Dave Kloss, and he's talking to the headlines, and he's saying, why would you move it back? He thought he got the yardage with that extra effort. 
Instead, it's Clemson football, first and 10, heading the other way. Choice, nice cutback, flag down as Choice goes down out across the 30-yard line. And they're going to get Higgins on the outside for holding, and then maybe a face mask after. Holding, offense, number five, 10-yard penalty, Replay first down. We've seen plenty of ETN and Choice today. We also saw Tavian Feaster get injured earlier in the game. He has not returned, and as you can see, he no longer has his helmet with him either. The third man now would be Lynn J. Dixon, who's had a carry today. The penalty sets them back inside the 10. And a huge rush advantage for Clemson. Delayed handoff. Choice breaks a tackle out to the 20. DJ Taylor forgot to wrap. Hey, he, he hurt his shoulder on that one. Kind of took that one on square, and Choice kind of lowered the lowered his body into him and couldn't get his arms around him because he was a little sore on that. Big hole up the middle and the burst out across the 35. And a first down for Adam Choice. Gain of 16 there. Replaced by Etienne, who is 11 yards shy of hitting 100 for the fourth game in a row. He'll get a few there. Zeke Rodney with the tackle. It's nice to have multiple backs back that can make plays like Choice and yeah. ETN and of course Feaster not not playing now, but it's dangerous weapons. Receiver screen, Higgins trying to make something happen and he'll get the first down yardage. On a good block from Garrett Williams. I think Lawrence is doing a good job of just taking what the defense is giving him. As you mentioned earlier, Anthony, Wake Forest playing a lot of off covers. He's just taking those little smoke routes to the outside, but when they give him a chance, he throws it deep. Lawrence, 14 of 17 here in the first half. They'll run it, and Demetrius Kemp got there in a hurry to take down ETN. Kemp's a rover guy. He was in the slot, and he comes off the edge. Uh, a way to make that play and you know, Wake Forest has done some solid things but again their offense has not been able to help them out when they get the football held to just 76 total yards in the first half Lawrence on the slant Renfro down inside the 35 and a gain of 18 took a play out of Wake Forest's offense Renfro just turns around be ready for it Trevor Lawrence guns it in his gut. Again, he's not really thinking he's getting the football, and all of a sudden he turns around. There comes, well, that's a good job by Renfro, though, having the awareness to catch that, so to let it deflect off his pads. 113 to go in the half. What you got for us, Adnan? Well, Beth, coming up with the Alexis half from a port, the highest scoring Red River showdown ever. Certainly tons of excitement with Oklahoma and Texas. Also, a showdown on the swap between LSU and Florida. Plenty of great defense there. And the Spartans stung by Northwestern. Join me, Joey and Jesse, coming up at the half. Beth? Thank you, Adnan. Looking forward to that. Well, this season, Taco Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans like these by awarding the best student section of the year. The Wake Forest Demon Deacon student section is already on the national watch list. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. One thirteen to work with before the intermission. Play action, Lawrence completes it to Ross. Now that's good for 11 yards. Ball's always in the perfect position when he throws it to his receivers. It's right out in front of him. Again, clear as day why right now Trevor Lawrence is the guy for Clemson. Good distribution to this offense. 13 different players have a touch in this first half. It's back to ETN. 
And he gets down inside the 20, corralled by Masterson. Up to 97 yards here in the first half for Travis. Good patience, too. I mean, when they want to go downhill and be forceful and be aggressive, they do that. But they also let their blockers in front of them, Beth, set them up. And then all of a sudden you see those bursts, especially with ETN on the outside. Trying to drop it off to the tight end. Galloway is taken down for a loss of a couple. Jake Simpson got him. Now the ninth different Tiger receiver that has a catch. And now they'll hustle under a minute to go. Still have their three timeouts. Looks like a timeout for Wake Forest. There's no penalty on the play. Timeout was called. Wake Forest. Their first time out of the half. The final 35 seconds, this 10th play of the drive that started on their own 19. And looking at a third and seven. Lawrence into the end zone, caught by T. Higgins for the touchdown. Trevor Lawrence right now sees a lot. His vision is good. And they basically, Beth, ran the same exact play that their last touchdown happened. He gets a little pressure in his face, but he stands in there and delivers. We saw that earlier to start the game. That was part of it. But look at this. Just rotating that outside receiver up the middle. And Wake Forest really doesn't have an answer for it. Masterson takes a big hit, but that's good concentration by Higgins holding on to that football. Have to keep an eye on Masterson. He is replacing Cameron Glenn, who was ejected for targeting earlier in the game. PAT from Greg Hugel, and it is 28 to nothing. All Tigers here in the first half. Well, tonight on ABC, unbeaten Notre Dame, heading to Virginia Tech. at Saturday Night Football presented by Wells Fargo. Tonight at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. They did, yeah, they already did that. <laughs> well, Anthony, you mentioned that Notre Dame defense. One thing they don't do is give up big plays. I think they've given up five plays of 30-plus yards this year. They're deep, they're talented up front, they're talented in the back playing very well right now. We've got you guys uh, making some playoff predictions in the second half. Right now, though, the playoff predictor for ESPN has the Irish just on the outside of the playoff. Here's a look at the teams that have the best chance to go unbeaten. And Alabama and Ohio State pretty close there. Clemson following right behind that. Yeah, keep, keep that graphic. I just want to show that I feel like this is, should be maybe around the 75 more because this team right now is rolling out. I guess 39 percent is what the numbers show. But when I watch them, I don't see anybody stopping this team. Is anybody going to go out there and punch them back in the mouth in the SEC? We haven't seen it. They do have to go down to Death Valley to play LSU on November 3rd, which, by the way, mark your calendars. That should be a phenomenal day of college football. As of right now, you're looking at five head-to-head -head matchups of ranked teams on that first Saturday in November. That sh that'll be, by the way, right after the first playoff reveal, which comes on October 30th. All building towards the national semifinals at the Orange and Cotton Bowls this year on December 29th, and then January 7th for the championship out in the Bay Area. Again, another minus run. We just showed the graphic. Two yards rushing for Wake Forest. I mean, Clemson, you know, they haven't really played any explosive passing teams uh, yet this year. I mean, think about it. Furman, Georgia Southern, Georgia Tech. This is a run-based team as well as Wake Forest. So, you know, great half of this defense. Hey, it's time for Adnan, Jesse, and Joey. Halftime, 28-0. Clemson leading Wake Forest. Now let's get you back to the studio. All right, Beth, thank you very much. It is indeed the Lutz Water Keith Gavin. And Francois is so good at throwing these in-breaking routes with receiver coming from his left 
to his right. Nice job, nice catch by Gab. In the second quarter, DJ Dallas stuffed for a loss. That's a nice highlight. Well, it was a 32 in the red zone, so that's why. We're going to go for it, though. Okay, on the next play, Nikosi Perry, Lawrence Cagers. He's setting it up. Perry, a bit of a struggle early in this game, just competing for his first 10, but gets this one in the end zone. Get Miami seven points. 10 7. Seminoles have the lead on ABC. Number five, LSU. Number 22, Florida. Tim Tebow being honored officially now. An all time member of the swamp. First quarter, it's uh, Nick Brosnan for Tebow being honored there. Of course, our teammate does a phenomenal job. As Ed Orgeron is looking off for his LSU team, he knows that defense is the name of the day. And Bro set here the touchdown. Yeah, first drive of the game. It got set up on the first play. Long completion to Justin Jefferson. And LSU's offense, fast start. Second quarter, it's LaMichael P. Ryan, one yard touchdown. Yeah, and it's been blitzing defense and run game. And if you want to see hard hitting football, turn on LSU Florida right now. Game tied at seven. Then it's Felipe Franks play action to Josh Heyman. We here. talked about this game coming out of which quarterback made the biggest plays. This would be called a touchdown. They go back and look at it, rule him out of bounds. Very next play, Franks throw a touchdown to Daquan Green. So Florida right now has the 14 to 10 lead. Iowa State, meantime, in action versus Oklahoma State in Stillwater. First quarter, Brock Purdy to Hakeem Butler. Check out this catch. And Brock Purdy comes into this game and has been on fire, completing 10 of his first 12. But watch the catch. One foot down. It's only good in college. The other foot was out of bounds. You only need one in college. Ball behind him, reaches out both mm. hands. One wow. foot down, touch. Left down. foot down. Zeb Nolan got the call instead. Brock Purdy in, making magic. Then Sheldon Crony scores. Really nice job here on the zone play. Being patient, allowing a crease to open up in front. And when he sees it, puts his foot in the ground, gets north-south quickly. And later, it's Purdy again, this time to Matthew Eaton. A lot of offense in this game. It's back and forth. Looks like whoever has the ball last can win this game. Where's Iowa State get all these quarterbacks from, by the way? You're right. Kyle Kemp. Kemp. Is Kemp. Is that Nolan? 30 to 21. Cyclones have the lead. It's on ESPN2. And then also, Indiana's facing Ohio State. Buckeyes coming off that emotional win against Penn State. Dwayne Haskins, J.K. Dobbins. One-handed catch, beautiful by Dobbins. He's been a bigger weapon this year in this offense, catching the ball out of the backfield. And then Dobbins touchdown as Ohio State leads at 7-3. to three. The second quarter, more from the Buckeyes. Haskins, first and 10, plenty of lead up to this one. And then Johnny Dixon, touchdown. Johnny Dixon, no catches last week against Penn State. He's their deep ball threat, goes deep. Nice throw by Haskins. Ohio State up 14 to 3 at that point in time. 4 and 1, the Hoosiers are obviously a big test in Columbus. And then uh, Peyton Ramsey to Peyton Hendershot. A little trickeration, a little misdirection, trying to fool the eye discipline of Ohio State's defense. That's been the problem for the Buckeyes this year. Their D gives up way too many explosive plays. It's Peyton's place. And then Ramsey to Nick Westbrook. And you wonder how Ohio State will recover from an emotional what? game at Penn State last week. They're behind to Indiana at Chaos. Home. Crazy. Chaos. Yeah, exactly. Jesse said chaos was coming. Hoosiers up by three. When we come back, seriously, the Red River showdown lived up to the hype. Plenty of points when we come back. Game day traditions are delivered by Pizza Hut. Official pizza. 28 nothing lead over Wake Forest. And after an injury scare last week for quarterback Trevor Lawrence, back in the starting lineup and looking pretty good after the early miscue. He was near flawless, had that early fumble, but uh, rarely misconnected through the air, hit nine different guys, in fact, offensively. Beth Mullins, Anthony Beck, Rocky Boyman. It was a real balanced attack for the Tigers uh, throughout and even hit some big plays. They dominated on offense and defense. Wake Forest really hasn't done anything plus the six penalties, but it's really what come down to this balance on offense. ETN at the back, really just nice job picking up blocks, finding holes, really easy. Wake Forest has really done nothing on defense to stop Clemson's offense. And then once the run game's going, what do you do? You start throwing the pass down the field, and Trevor Lawrence is showing his arms. And Wake Forest will try and find their way, held to just 79 yards of total offense, only five rushing in that first half. Yeah, it's been tough. I mean, 79 total yards, it's not what we've seen. They didn't show that on tape, obviously, last week. Even against Notre Dame, Beth, they were able to put some points up on the board, but too much for this Clemson defense to put on them. Hartman is sacked for the third time, and that's the second of the day for Trey Lamar. Trey Lamar is the enforcer at the line of scrimmage, and he gets another opportunity on third down. But, again, this is kind of what it's been, and what do we uh, – 
About 45 seconds, not even, Beth, into the first, yeah. into the third quarter, and they're already off the field. And Trey Lamar looked like he had the running back man-to-man, -man, and he just continued to come and said, heck with it, I'll just go straight to the quarterback. <laughs> Called off the dogs. Busy day for Maggio today in the direction of Amari Rogers. <laughs> and they'll start at the 30 after the 50-yard punt. Rocky? Obviously, Wake Forest let their defensive coordinator, Jay Savell, go a couple weeks ago. But it's tough for any defensive coordinator with the way this offense plays that goes so fast. But with the penalties they've had today and just not being able to sustain drives, it makes it so tough on a defense. I think they've done better at the beginning, but you can see that the how tired they're getting. You can see just, you know, as, as this game continues to go on, there's just really tough going against this offense. Yeah, just a couple of weeks ago, they went to Dave Cohen and Lyle Hemphill, the uh, co-defensive coordinators now for the second week in a row. It's been a challenge to slow down Trevor Lawrence making his second career start and Travis Etienne. Gone! Second massive run of the day, 70 yards for the score. Behind the block of Tremaine Ankrum. That fast, Beth. Again, it's Wake Forest just hasn't been in the right seams, gaps. And when you don't have gap integrity, they will make you pay. And right now, ETN is getting some big numbers. The first Tiger in 18 years with four consecutive 100-yard rush days. You got to go back to Woodrow Dantzler. 167 yards on 10 carries and two monster TDs. PAT is good, 35 zip. He doesn't need too much space, but when it's there, Beth, nobody there, untouched. And you're not gonna catch him from behind. Tremendous speed, home run hitter, Travis Etienne. Travis Etienne, the last four games, a school record for most rushing yardage over that stretch. He's still got time to add to it if they choose to send him back in there. And a comfortable lead here with 35-0 Clemson on top. On a day where we've already seen unbeaten Oklahoma lose to Texas in the Red River rivalry. Ohio State, it's hands full for a half against Indiana. NC State and West Virginia, along with Alabama, already winner. Cincinnati's still unbeaten. Picked up the win, and for Travis Etienne, that last run, 70 yards on the touchdown, a career long for him. And there's a huge pop by Nolan Turner to stick the QB after a nine-yard game. He hasn't had many runs in this game, Beth, but he's taking shots on every single one of them. And you know, he'll learn to run as a quarterback, when to slide, when to take the shots, but you got to protect yourself if you want to last the season. They've got a first down there on the handoff to Matt Colburn. You mentioned NC State getting the win earlier. They have a bye next week, so does Clemson. And then they will meet each other in Death Valley in two weeks' time. And it certainly looks more and more like both will be undefeated going into that contest. I hope it's a good matchup. I mean, I'm kind of shocked North Carolina State losing the defensive players, all four drafted. All defensive linemen were drafted in the NFL. And, you know, Nehemiah Hines, their tailback, is is going on to the NFL. They, they've done a nice job. And Ryan Finley obviously is a common denominator at the quarterback position. And he had a big game today. Uh, I think certainly Clemson could use a little help from a couple more teams in the ACC to keep their strength of schedule up as they try and run the table in the lead. Complete pass right there, and it's fourth down. And of course, Virginia Tech and Miami, can one of those two teams continue to win out? Yeah. I mean, VTech got that big game tonight, but Miami, I believe they're down right now. So again, they just can't afford for some of those other top teams to lose those games. It's been a struggle for Hartman, 7 to 20, Beth. One interception, 74 yards, really has not had a complimentary run game to open things up, and they've really shut down Greg Dortch, this Clemson defense, really nice job today of taking away their only weapon. 
high. Punt Rogers, the fair catch. And they'll have it to start at their own 17-yard line in a 35-0 lead. Coming next August. We've got a wide variety of sports around the Atlantic Coast Conference coming your way. 35-0, our score here. Trevor Lawrence hands it off, and uh, Tavian Feaster is back in the lineup. A little fair fair, I'm sure you've uh, enjoyed over the course of your days, Anthony. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the most common snack is uh, the fried Oreos. I mean, that's always got to try it, right? Yeah. <laughs> now it's become a year-to-year -year thing for me. i just trying to get the address to get them sent directly to the house now. It's uh, been tough. <laughs> I used to hawk newspapers at the Great New York State Fair. That was the traditional end of summer. Trevor Lawrence gets to the outside and out of bounds. If you're ever up that way, you need to try a Hoffman's hot dog with a little mustard on it and a little relish. It's probably my, my favorite at the fair. Of course, Texas thoroughly enjoyed themselves yeah, at the Texas fair down fair, yeah. outside the Cotton Bowl today. And the big upset over Oklahoma, knocking the Sooners from the unbeaten ranks. Opens the door a little bit for your uh, West Virginia Mountaineers. It is, you know, I don't want to jinx them, but yeah. they are playing well. Uh, you know, it's Will Greer is, is one of the best quarterbacks. Lawrence hit as he releases, caught by TJ Chase. That'll be short of the first down, and it's fourth down coming up. They don't want to take those free shots on the quarterback. Demps now, that's twice on first down, hitting the tailback with nobody blocking him, and then again there coming right at him. And, you know, with Lawrence being tall at six foot six, Beth kind of opens up his body a little bit for those those shots you wouldn't think would be a factor that could, could potentially come into play. Yeah, I appreciate the way he keeps his eyes downfield and he's not affected by the rush, but that's a fine line between that and taking yeah. too many shots. They have been able to keep Dortch quiet so far today, and they'll throw him down again. Whistle dead around the... And so, so strong at the quarterback position. They do have a roadie in Death Valley uh, down at LSU. They have a possible matchup maybe with Georgia on, uh, in the SEC championship game, although Kentucky's looking pretty good, too, in the East, Rocky. Now, Anthony, I was just going to say, with Will Wilger's numbers are very impressive, even more impressive considering that NC State game was canceled, right? So that's coming in... One less game. Yeah, and it may affect both of them, Rocky. I mean, think about it. I mean, North Carolina State, they may both need those kind of games, but uh, they're probably not going to replay those games. No question about that. Two FBS schools, but uh, you're right. That did play into the hands. They will not re They will not play West Virginia. They did schedule East Carolina, and this is Kendall Hinton, the new quarterback for Wake Forest. Down inside the 10 yard line. Kayvon Wallace got him by the shoestring. Hinton was a starter last year in this game. Remember, John Warford got hurt, didn't start the game, and he actually had a solid performance. Moved him to wide receiver and trying to get a spark. I think that's what Clawson's looking for against Clemson. 53 yard run. Hinton again. Let's uh, revisit that run. Yeah, Hinton, uh, again, it's just a design quarterback run. Nobody's home. A lot of backup players right now in the game, especially up front for Clemson. But, you know, watch it. Oh, boy, hamstring. He just came in his first play. Goes almost 60-plus yards. So it's a nice play. It's good to see Wake Forest do something offensively. It's been such a quiet day for them. Hinton to the air. And complete rocket. And guys, Greg Dortch on the Wake Forest sideline right now, a shoe off, they're looking at his ankle. So he is uh, not in the game right now in a critical time where he can score a touchdown. See here, he got whipped down on the punt. Looks like it got caught underneath the tackler, and he looked okay there, but sometimes those things tweak up. He may be getting them retaped as well, so hopefully he's okay. Getting bottled up. Kendall Joseph, first guy there, and it's fourth and goal. They've already got a one fourth down stop today. Looks like they're going to take some points here. Nick Skiba's coming on.
This would be a 25-yard attempt for Dick. Won three straight conference championship games. Can you name the only Power Five school to win four straight conference championship games? Huh. Interesting, I man. Power Five. Not, and not just a championship, but the actual championship game. As you know, some right. have had that for a long time, others not so much. Tide, 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 right? You're rolling, you're rolling with the tide? I'm gonna roll with them. Yeah, I mean, I, they've been the most dominant. Could possibly be another eight. Be. Was it was it Florida State maybe in the ACC? We're going to start to see some of the uh, younger backup players now for Clemson getting an opportunity. Although not the offensive line in front of Lawrence. Yeah, that's. I want to make sure he's safe. Yeah, that's that's uh, they do have a few guys, but you're right. There's interesting. He's still in the game. I know it's early in the third, but would imagine we'll see a ton of Lynn J. Dixon carrying the ball. Rocky guys. I just got the word from Wake Forest. Greg Dortch is out for the rest of the game with a sprained ankle. Wow. Bad the worst here for Wake Forest. I remember he got hurt last November, the abdominal injury, and did not play the final five games of the season for Wake. And now the injury today. Dixon breaking a tackle. Gets out beyond the 45 and a gain of 18. Freshman out of Butler, Georgia. The stable is full, Beth. Mm. You know, Dixon obviously has had some snaps this year in some of these blowout games, but again, they just quarterback, wide receiver, running backs, they just continue to load up through recruiting. Lawrence protected but throws it behind his intended receiver, Thompson. And it's it's taken him almost three, two and a half quarters to throw a bad pass, and Dabo might be saying, hey, it was open deep, but wide open receiver there but he's been pretty good so far yeah. I'll tell you I mean I'm impressed I mean the film is there there's there's no confusion why he's the starting quarterback right now and uh, he's only going to get better you know that that's the thing about yeah. it I mean every game he takes it another notch up he's uh, the latest here at Clemson of course it's been quite a run for Dabo Sweeney with the three consecutive playoff berths a couple of national Coach of the Year honors, seven straight 10 win seasons at Clemson as they have really reached to the top of the game. And you know what he told us? He said, look, we're not even peaking yet. You know, yeah. he, he he says, you know, we have some a lot of critical errors, technique issues. We had a couple bad turnovers. You know, for them, I just feel like, you know, they haven't hit in their stride and this is just one of those games that can continue to get better. In. Lawrence incomplete. Well, it's a, a run for Sweeney and Clemson that actually started with Wake Forest. Right here in Winston-Salem on a With that coaching hire at, the, at that time, look at him now. Unbelievable. <laughs> I remember he was telling us a story last year, Beth, about, you know, when that happened, the AD called him in his office, and he was thinking, like, why is he calling me in there? Like, am I getting fired now, too, or anything like that? And they're like, they gave him the head coach, interim head coach position. It's pretty, pretty incredible. Great. Power five to win four straight and it would be the Florida Gators of Steve Spurrier back in the mid 90s. Interesting. Four in a row. So actually not, not even Alabama won four straight championship games in the SEC. Now, now didn't Florida State win a bunch back in the? Uh, regular season championships, yes. Right, okay, they, didn't have the, they did not have the yeah. title. Clemson has a chance to win a fourth outright. Uh, ACC championship. By the way, the Gators are leading undefeated LSU in the third quarter, 14 to 10 down the swamp. Really? Oh boy. So uh, we started out the day, I think, well, 14 undefeated, and uh, that number may be dwindling, which could be good news for Clemson as uh, we get closer to the playoff reveal at the end of the month, the first. 
Coming up next, another one of those unbeatens. It's the Kentucky Wildcats. And if you haven't said Snell yeah yet this season, that UK Benny Snell, big road test at Texas A&M. Hey, he's been a one-man show for that football team. And I think, uh, you know, Terry Wilson may have to make a few plays yes. in this football game. Hadn't had to do much so far. He's been a good manager, but if they get down in a game, I'm wondering, do they have any offensive firepower in the passing game to come back? Molly Rogers takes a hit, stays on his feet, and down it goes around the 21. Well, that game that is coming up next, Benny Snell, one of the top running backs in the land. They are the top SEC rushing team this year. Two huge home wins back to back. Of course, they've already proven they can win on the road, Anthony. They won at Florida. Yeah, I mean, he's controlled every game, and there's those odds, Beth. I would say he's he's got the best odds in my book. Those, they oh, those all, running backs. These yeah. guys have losses. There's ETN, 100 to 1. He may slide up, but I'll put a dollar on uh, Snell there. <laughs> Why not? I think Travis is going to move up that list, too. With two huge games back to back and a terrific start to the season as Chase Bryce has now come in at quarterback. The redshirt freshman will run the show as Choice gets the first down and a 10-yard run. If anybody deserved the game ball, this guy did mm. against Syracuse. I mean, I'll tell you what now. Pass that he made and some of those plays. I mean, his numbers weren't great, but he didn't make any mistakes. And they should be all said thank you for what his performance. You know, the uh, coordinators talked about what an emotional week it was building up to that game with the departure of Kelly Bryant and really the preparation that they did as a quarterback room and as an entire team to get ready for the what if something happens to Trevor. And they were ready for it. And Chase got the job done late. And another huge play for Clemson. Adam Choice. Touchdown Tigers, 64 yards. I mean, where's the middle of the defense in the second level? You know, one backer. Again, watch his guard, May. Great block. He gets the mic back, and there's nobody there. Uh, I mean, listen, I don't think Clemson's in, in a passing mood right now. They're going to run the ball, and Trevor Lawrence, like, hey, there's another one. This running game has just been dominant today. Their fourth touchdown of over 50 yards. They have now rushed for 315 on the day as Choice joins ETN over 100 yards this afternoon. All Tigers. Week, I mean, their offense could, their line could just block a little bit. Francois, he'll carve you up and looks like he's getting some time today. The reaction of Chase Bryce. His uh, teammates come back to oh. the side. <laughs> Hats off to the Clemson offense today. It's a nice assist on that handoff. <laughs> Still 4.41 to go in the third. A 70-yard run for ETN, 64 for Choice, then ETN 59 yards. And a touchdown pass as well, Lawrence to Ross. I think the offensive line for Clemson Beth needed this game mm -hmm. to kind of impose their will on uh, defensive front. I sure did it today. It's Chris registered. He just registered a big hit. How about that? Starting to see some of the depth here, uh, some of the younger players. He's actually older. He's a graduate. He's been waiting his senior, uh, his his time to get some reps, and it's good to see him get in the game. It's always nice to see when you go deep in the bench there and some of those older players that don't get a chance. Yeah, some of these uh, other guys getting out there, Foster and Huggins. We've seen Pinckney. Of course, the freshman Thomas. Plenty of PT up front. Hinton's going to run with it again. Out across the 30. And this is so valuable for a team like Clemson. They, you know, I, you know, with the score being out of reach like this for Wake Forest, they get to get some of those younger guys some work. So when an injury does happen later in the season, a guy has experience to step in and play. 
You're right. And we see it every week. Somebody goes down and some unknown steps in and they have to replace them. So, uh, you know, look, they're, they're pretty set with their ones. We know those guys on defense, but Clemson definitely getting a chance here to show some of their other players. And they get the open date next Saturday and get ready for uh, undefeated NC State and then what looks like a rejuvenated Florida State with a trip down to Tallahassee to close out the month of October. Fourth down, another punt coming up. Cleveland Farrell, Dexter Lawrence, Christian Wilkins, Austin Bryant, those are the guys that have led the way up front and getting a good look at a lot of the depth for the Tigers. They're gonna get a chance next year when those guys move on and Good to see him embrace the good play for Register Wilkins. First guy out to high five him, and they're into this game still. They're not sitting on the bench and eating hot dogs like we used to do in the league, Rocky. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Tenth punt of the day. They're caught by Rogers. And here's what Todd McShay thinks about some of these prospects for the NFL draft next spring. Thinks uh, Big Dex will probably go top five and Wilkins shortly thereafter. And then Cleveland Farrell, another guy that won't be on the board very long. Yeah, I know you like these guys a lot, Rocky. Austin Bryant is another NFL guy. We don't have him on there. I think he's going to go just as high. But talk to an NFL scout today. His favorite one was Lawrence. The size, he's 350, Rocky. Just a guy tough to handle in the middle. Yeah, I just think it depends on the team. I think Lawrence, with his size, 350 pounds, more of a you know a 3-4 scheme, like a you know, two-gap kind of player. I think Wilkins is more of a single-gap guy. Here they go again, Dixon. A foot race for the end zone. Unbelievable explosive plays today for Clemson. That one goes 65 yards. How does this happen? How do you not have anybody on the second and third level to tackle a running back through the line? Well, they, they tried to simplify it, Rocky, right? They made a change, but no one's there. And they're still starters in this game. I mean, this isn't a bunch of backups for Wake Forest. I mean, they generally... Well, they, in the right spots, but today just cannot get it done. Travis Etienne loves to see his boys run the football, and they're doing it. 380 yards rushing. Four scores of over 55 yards. Well, this season, for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, all state will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Plenty of PATs today to add to that list. 49-3, to three, Tigers on top. Still third quarter, Beth. Total gonna, yards. It's gonna get, wow. Lucky number five, 555 Ooh. yards. Wow. I think it's safe to say that Jay Sawbell was not the big issue with the defense, right? There's clearly some other things going on with this defense right now. Well, they're young, Rocky, right? I mean, they, they got some some players are trying to fit in. Uh, you know, when four of your top five tacklers, Beth, are defensive backs, that's, a, that's always a glaring issue, and they're not even getting in on the tackles now. And, you know, Dave Clawson obviously has to get this uh, – this defense going and cranked up because they're only halfway through and they're going to have uh, some opponents now that, that can run the football and they're going to be on the road too about the next couple weeks after the bye. We've got a studio update at Nan Burke. All right, thanks very much, Beth. We go back to Columbus, an update on Indiana and Ohio State. How about this play call? Harris Campbell is wide open. Ask us to him the second longest touchdown reception of his first 71 yards. Ohio State's up by 15, Beth. Buckeyes starting to pull away from the Hoosiers. That's not a good look right there for Wake Forest fans. Uh, their most explosive player, Greg Dortch, the ankle injury and struggling really to even make it over to the cart or the locker room for the Demon Deacons. Yeah, that's not good. That's uh, that's this entire offense. I mean, you know, we said it before, 20 touches. He was barely able to get that today, but. They do have a bye, so hopefully it's not going to take long to see him back on the field. Seven targets, three catches today for Greg. And they will have to try and regroup. 
and just now trying to stay as healthy as possible. They've had several guys knocked out of this ball game, and now another injured player down on the ground. I believe that's Javiante Nash. Back up left tackle, number 63. Forrest now Clemson in front of the in the eyes of the committee you say hey we did the exact same thing and maybe even a little bit better um, yeah. as you start to ta uh, think about those things for the selection committee uh, to ponder in the next couple of weeks before that first reveal right? well, I, th I think it's especially important Beth because if, if you look at how the season's going to go here especially say for Clemson and Notre Dame there's a scenario there's not a t lot of tough teams on either of these teams schedules so you got to figure some style points are going to mm -hmm. factor in at some point right when you blow out a team and I, I think the more you can do that the more you can make your case of both you know both Clemson and Notre Dame end up undefeated mm -hmm. those style points may be a factor. And they'll have a couple common opponents, not just Wake. Syracuse is yep. still on Notre Dame's schedule. Obviously, that was a close game last week, but it's very realistic to say that Clemson and Notre Dame could finish their seasons both undefeated. How does it shake out now? You know, do, do they both get in potentially? I mean, I, I think if you win the a a ACC and Clemson runs the table, they're in and it's golden. I don't know, though, okay, if it shapes out, if they are to were to have one loss, I don't know if their resume, at least up to now, would be good enough but again that's down the road but those are the things again when you look at Clemson you got to continue to go out there and take care of business a lot of direct snaps here to Kendall Hinton well, Anthony here are your yeah, playoff see picks right now this is as of today of course Bama Ohio State to me in my eyes we've seen Georgia twice and I think like nobody really wants to talk about Georgia but they're pretty good on the defense, and I think they're from a secondary standpoint, they can hang with Alabama, but we potentially wouldn't see that. Notre Dame, Rocky, I get in love. I'm never biased, Whoa. okay? Whoa. I'm not biased. I'm never going to say West Virginia, put them a up. A little low right now, I nope. think. Wait, nope. do mine come up? Okay. Notre, oh. Notre Dame at four, but I, I don't have Clemson in there yet. They're right there, trust me. I'm not counting Clemson out. They just, again, this is a, a dominant performance by then, but moving forward, they just got to continue to do their job. All right, Rocky, you're up. We can see you right got, there. You got Notre Dame at three in front of Georgia and then Clemson at six. I, I just think Notre Dame's resume, who the teams they've beaten have been more impressive. I think the win over number seven Stanford in dominant fashion is better than Georgia's win over Missouri. College football presented by PlayStation 4. That is not Death Valley, folks. It's a road game for Clemson, and the faithful have shown out. You know, they are enjoying this one over Wake Forest. Hinton trying to make a play. And he'll work his way out close to midfield. As we are underway here in the fourth quarter. Good job by Hinton there. Uh-oh, he's a little gimpy, though. That's no uh, coaches tell him to stay in. <laughs> I don't know. Paulson's like, yeah, tough it out. Hinton has been making some plays. And, and Hinton, if you remember from last year, he throws a really nice deep ball. The short stuff he struggles with, but a really good on deep stuff. 11 carries, 92 yards for Kendall. And now he'll try one of those deep throws. Incomplete. Intended for Steve Claude. Right there on the sidelines. One of our parabola operators. Appears to be all right. I mean, if you're going to throw a ball up in the air, I would go the other side. That's where number seven, Scotty Washington, is. Yeah. He's finally healthy, or at least close to being fully healthy. He's 6'5", 225 on the bottom of your screen here. But, again, this is he's given this offense a little juice today, and it's been kind of a down day for Wake Forest. Well, they're going to throw it again. Uh, exact same play, exact same result. Looking for Alex Bachman, our Parab operator. Agile got out of the way of that one. <laughs> Off-season program we have here at ESPN. Get these guys in shape. <laughs> doing some speed ladders in the off-season and get ready for this situation. They keep your head on a swivel yeah, down here is. too. Now it Never ain't know. just like you're showing up. I mean, we got a rigorous routine you got to get through. Boston taking take a little more time here. Obviously, that's. Let's see if they come this side, Anthony or Scotty.
Hinton. Of course, the other thing you're doing too here is extending the game. That stopped the clock on three different plays. You gotta find that balance between uh, staying healthy and getting guys some valuable reps. Yeah, it may have been nice to run the yeah. ball three downs instead of, I mean, that, that took 20 seconds to run three plays and now they gotta punt the ball back to Clemson, which when Clemson's just trying to run the ball and run the clock out, they're scoring big touchdowns. I mean, they're not tackling them. So defense, you know, they need to get to a nice, you know, base defense here. and. Make sure they got players at the second level that can make tackles on these running backs. It is a career high 11th punt for Dom Maggio today. No return on it. Of course, we got a big game coming up on ABC tonight. Notre Dame and Vontech. What did the Irish look two decades? Remain unbeaten with uh, Ian Book at quarterback and one of the best defenses in college football so far this year. We know the Irish D is good, but are they Boyman good, Rocky? Look at this play here. Heisman Trophy winner Eric Crouch running him down. How about that, Anth? You got to love it. That guy ran a 4-4 at the combine, so there you go. Look at, look at this. You got a side track. Grow that one back? What do you yeah, think? Bring it back, a little Elvis. In the good stuff. Looking forward to seeing that Notre Dame. Virginia Tech game. In all seriousness, you got a uh, couple of keys to that one tonight? Well, you know, I, I think that I, I worry about Virginia Tech's defense, right? I mean, I know the atmosphere is, is going to be intense, Rocky. I know that it's going to be loud. But once you get past that first six minutes of the game, what do you got for me, Virginia Tech? Yeah. You got a backup quarterback. I know he played well, uh, you know, the last game, but this is Notre Dame. Notre Dame needs to come out and set the tone early and really counter the audience that's going to be trying to make some noise in this game. Another big play here for Clemson and Dixon. All the way down to the 20. Well, Anthony, you were talking about Virginia Tech's defense. They're going to be without their best pass rusher, Trayvon Hill. He was, I believe, suspended uh, for the rest of the season. So that's just one less piece they have on that defense. Has already been pretty maligned this year. And, you know, the offensive line for VTech hasn't been playing as, as good as people wanted. So, I mean, look, Notre Dame always finds themselves in a position, though, where they're, you know, they're in the conversation. Everyone's talking about them, and then they've suffered a bad loss. So, oh, I hope it's not tonight. Oh, this is, <laughs> you're falling into the trap. Oh, the <laughs> Irish Catholic guilt. <laughs> Inside the 20, that's the coach's kid, Will Sweeney, with the carry. Nice. All right, how about that? Clemson fans down here love it, too. Going crazy. Feed him the rock, coach. That would just said in his uh, his voice, get him the ball. Let's go. Get him the ball again. Let's go. And <laughs> run it with choice. What a special moment, though, for uh, any parent and child. And share a moment like this. Oh, look at that little smile. Little <laughs> smile. <laughs> That's good stuff. I mean, listen, it's hard enough to play football and major college football and to be on the team. And you know, he was a good player in high school. I mean, you know, he's just coming out here with his dad. And look, he's yoked up. He's obviously got a good program yeah. on here. He's obviously his guns are he's looking big, man. They got 300 yard rushers today. Out of that backfield. Here's one of them, Choice, staying on his feet, tumbles down to the two. All right, is there any pressure right now on Tony Elliott and Jeff Scott to give it to number 22 and White? Yeah, well, I'm just going to throw that out there. Well, jet sweep or <laughs> maybe a little fake slip screen and throw the ball. They're not going to throw the ball, obviously, oh. but uh, yeah, they're going to slide. It always helps to, right. to get the head coaches on the ball. <laughs> I mean, just kind of a general rule. <laughs> or is he a decoy right here? They'll throw the fade the other way, and a foot down, touchdown! DeAndre Overton. Six four, pretty good job, a high point in that one. I mean, that's that's uh, that's textbook right there. Going up at the highest point, raising your hands, even with the defenders. Face, hand in his face mask, he's still able to bring it down, control it, and the foot is in bounds. 
And there's a team player right uh, you there. You know, the kid draws a double team on the other side. <laughs> Is that what it was? Every, everybody <laughs> in the building thinks it's going to 22. We don't have that footage for some reason. <laughs> uh, 55 yards. You're probably thinking it's a tough choice to give one of those guys a game ball, but I'll tell you, the offensive line, I don't recall, maybe you can tell me wrong, Beth, has anybody touched any of these backs on these touchdown runs? Wow. They've been scot free. I mean, you know, the, hand, the line of scrimmage to the second level has been blocked up, and these guys are just running through holes with nobody around them. And oh, by the way, Lawrence has only missed on five pass attempts today. What you got for us, Adnan? Well, Beth got an update on what's happening in Miami. Hurricanes are facing the Seminoles, and here they come. Lawrence Cager here, the recipient, recipient of the touchdown, and Miami has scored again, so it's a six-point deficit. Four minutes left, third quarter, ABC, so still plenty of time. Also, LSU and Florida, Nick Brosette has been huge for the Tigers out of the backfield. A tight defensive game, which we expected. LSU up by five. Beth? Also, well, LSU moves in front, and here comes Miami. A couple of good ones going on right now. And a new quarterback coming on for Wake Forest. It's Matthew Considine, the redshirt freshman from Florida. Hands it off to Christian Beal Smith. A Kendall uh, hit looks like he may have sprained an ankle or was a little gimpy on that last series, so uh, they got to go a little deeper on the depth chart here to get this uh, redshirt freshman in. On a day where uh, Greg Dorch, their top playmaker, had to leave with an ankle injury. They're hoping he'll be able to return after their bye week next week. And for Clemson, they are headed uh, home to Death Valley in two weeks for a showdown of unbeatens with NC State. Neil Smith again. <laughs> Ian Book and the Irish coming up tonight, 8 Eastern on ABC at Virginia Tech. I know, Rocky, you were chirping a little bit on social media this week that Enter Sandman is not even your favorite Metallica no, God, song. No. I, I'm a diehard Metallica <laughs> fan, Beth, and no, they... no good Metallica fan would even put that song close. That's like 83rd <laughs> on the list. Is it really bad? I... Oh, oh, I gotta listen to some Metallica. You gotta get more. deeper into those albums, Anthony. Come on, I, I will be your tutor. I've never got okay. into that James album. James Hetfield on line one for you, Rocky. <laughs> line one. You need Damage Incorporated. I'll put that at one. <laughs> Bill Smith breaking a tackle into the secondary and hauled down around the 30 yard line. First down, Wake Forest. Well done here. They really like uh, Bill Smith. Uh, you know, he's gotten some reps. 42-yard run shows good burst, good speed you know, against some of the backups for Clemson. But I, you know, those some of those backups are three, four, five-star guys. So again, this is great work for him, and you know, maybe this gives him some more reps. Uh, Beth, I mean, they got to find a running game, a more consistent running game, which they have not been able to find today. Freshman from right here in Winston-Salem. Under eight minutes to go. First and ten for Considine. Thrown down for a loss back at the 35, KJ Henry. Well, tomorrow at 10 Eastern on ESPN, it's Sunday NFL Countdown presented by Snickers. Odell Beckham Jr. will sound off on the Giants' rough start, plus A Rod and Patrick Mahomes. The story of their connection. Well, coming up on Sunday NFL Countdown with Sam Ponder and the gang. The Giants' poor start. Uh, are we going to continue to blame the lineman, or is the quarterback maybe oh. the, the guy that has the issues? I mean, look, there are people saying, why didn't they take a quarterback at the draft? And they decided that they felt like they could win games. Well, right now, they got injuries and poor line play that hasn't turned around for them. And definitely not happy with their start, for sure. There's a couple guys married together for the rest of their careers, right? Saquon Barkley and Sam Darnold. Giants yeah. and Jets picked right after one another. There was some good buzz in the preseason about that, but it's been a struggle. It's I mean, look, quieted both, down a bit. Both of those teams, obviously, Jets in a rebuilding <laughs> stage, but Giants, I mean, let's be honest, they felt like they, they could win right now. That's why they didn't choose a quarterback. Eli Manning was good enough in their eyes to, to get this thing going, but just haven't been able to get it clicking. And, you know, 
OBJ is, 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 is another guy. You see a good quarterback on Monday night, right? Drew Brees, a chance to set the all-time passing yardage record for the New Orleans Saints. Going for the end zone, bobbled and dropped, incomplete. Intended for Jones. That's unfortunate. That's a heck of a throw. Johnson dime here, right in his hands. Oh, you got to turn your hands the other way. Let it come right into your bread basket there. He turns his hands the other way, th thumbs in, and doesn't concentrate all the way in. Nice route, nice throw. Just couldn't finish the catch. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Fourth and ten. Counts it down, slinging it downfield, and it's broken up right at the goal line. They've been doing just about everything right for Dabo Sweeney. And of course, uh, interesting to note when it comes to Dabo, you know, the win last week was the 106th of his career. That passed Newt Rockney on the all time wins list. His win today, if we're going to give it to him here, will bump him his win percentage uh -huh. in front of Bear Bryant. Career win percentage. Just a little perspective. Um, the decade of Dabo at Clemson, which includes a national championship. He's been uh, unbelievable. Man, I tell you, I, he does it the right way. He's a, he's a great person all, off the field. We've met him several times. The guys embrace him. You know, he treats these kids like they're his own. And, uh, you know, a lot of coaches are doing that, but it just he has a sense of just connection with them. And, you know, he pushes them when they need to be pushed, but you know, he's been able to get this Clemson team consistently every year. Getting bigger recruits, better players, and just being in that elite conversation every season. And he's one of just four active guys with the Natty. Of course, six for Saban, three for Urban Meyer, and Jimbo Fisher making the move this year from Florida State to Texas A&M. And the question for Clemson is, how long will it take to get the next one? Can Trevor Lawrence as a true freshman? Can he lead this team? Can he get hot enough over the next couple games that he does with what Jake Fromm did for Georgia last year and lead this team to a potential win in a national championship? That's what they feel right now by making him the starter. So just need to see what he does moving forward. We've got Jimbo Fisher, by the way, coming up next as Texas A&M Aggies facing Kentucky. A little preview of that one when we come back. Though with the Buckeyes, Beth. Oh, Indiana trying to put a little scare into them. Good start with the Hoosiers. How about that guy right there? That kid's ready to go in. Brought his helmet. He's ready to play. On a 56-3 Clemson lead. Got 413 to go. And it's been one of those days for Wake Forest. Nothing seems to go right. And in fact, now you're even tackling your own guys. Uh, last punt. Ugh. Sometimes it works Ouch. out that way. Yeah, yeah you know, it's yeah. just uh, not, not a lot of uh, buzz on the sideline. They're, they're obviously talking about it here, but um, it just hasn't been from top to bottom, all the way across the board, defense, offense, special teams. Just Wake Forest never had a shot in this game. and. It's because of Clemson. That's, that's what happens when you yeah. you go up against these guys. They just got so many weapons, and this defense came out and played the D line, which we didn't get to talk about much. But they shut this team down. Yep. Farrell, Farrell and Wilkins and Bryant, just big time. Hey, tonight after the Utah Stanford games, head over to Sports Center on ESPN with Bucci and Stan. They've got the complete post fight breakdown. Habib and McGregor from UFC 229. Also the latest from college football and a uh, four game day, I believe, in Major League Baseball playoffs. That's all on SportsCenter coming up after the Utah-Stanford matchup. You like McGregor? It's been a while since he's fought, right? Yeah, did he box his last fight? I think the last fight was. Uh, <laughs> that was in the, in, the, in the ring, not the octagon. <laughs> Yeah. 
And uh, Wake Forest going to be forced to punt right here. That's KJ Henry. Underneath tackle. Of course, stick around. We've got to, we're going from one unbeaten to another. Kentucky still unblemished. One of the surprise teams of this college football season. And a chance once again to check out Josh Allen and Benny Snell as they visit Aggie Land. And Will Sweeney, uh, Sweeney here, the coach's kid, back to return this punt. There he is. From the, uh, he's gonna be standing right around his own 35 yard line. Busy day for Maggio, kicking it from inside the 15. Sweeney's gonna give it a go. There's no shot he was fair catching that bet. <laughs> Hey, we talked to Benny Snell a couple of weeks ago in your huddle up, and he had this to say about UFC. You're a tough guy. If you can hard tonight. He's a tough guy. This is Sweeney on the end around. He took the uh, took the pitch from Hunter Renfro, who's now in at quarterback. So Hunter has caught a pass. He's punted today and now in at quarterback and you see Christian Wilkins he's like hey how come he gets to play quarterback <laughs> I've been begging to play quarterback he does he's like can I get one snap or something I, I'll tell you what he's as athletic as any defensive lineman I've ever seen he might be able to do a couple things at the quarterback position Look at, he's still got his helmet on over there around yeah, the 40 like, come on he restretched he got the foam roller he's all warmed up he's got a little sweat going he's working on Brent Venables come on look at look at I'm the guy could you imagine if he did go in though? No, he might bait him. <laughs> Dabo might. Dabo took the headset off, so I don't think there's any shot. Still got the mouthpiece in his hand though. I don't know. And I mean, look at there's Big Dex right <laughs> behind him saying, hey, if he's going, yeah, I'm really. going too. Yeah, hey, if Big Dex goes in, that's it. I'm done. It's like, let me be the, the jet Three. sweep guy. 350 <laughs> pound quarterback. Wilkins jet sweep to Dexter Lawrence. Uh. All right, right here. Okay. And it's another big play. Dixon looking for a block in front of him. Dixon breaking a tackle inside the five. Touchdown. Oh, look at that. He may get a flag on this, but he doesn't care. Christian Wilkins running all the way <laughs> over. Ah, there you go. I love it, man. You know, Wilkins hasn't played a snap in about two hours. And he's the first one out there running. Keep your eyes on Hunter Renfro, right here, number 13. Wow, he gets a big block. He was just playing quarterback, folks. Leads us around, and I'll tell you what, he might have to. Here he goes. Let's clock it. Get the 40. Here I'll show go. you my speed right He's here. A... Oh, boy. He can skip the combine now. <laughs> Easy now. Don't pull Go straight Andy. to the draft. He hasn't done anything yet in a while. Be careful. Lynn J. Dixon, 135 yards rushing on the season, and today, 163 on 10 carries. The most rushing yards for Clemson as a team since 1981 against Wake Forest when they ran for 471. Excuse me, 471 today. Hey, this week on ESPN's Monday Night Football, Drew Brees chasing after Peyton Manning's career NFL passing record. He could also pass Brett Favre along the way. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown, served by Applebee's at 6 Eastern, and then it's Washington.